Hello everyone and welcome back to our beginner lecture series. In this video, we are going to start our introduction to Joseki. Joseki are common variations that you'll see in a Go game. Joseki usually refers to common variations in the corner. Joseki's, the word Joseki is actually a Japanese Go term that we adopted in America. Joseki is used in other sports such as common variations or common patterns or common ideas. For example, a baseball game, a common joseki would be to step up to the plate and when your opponent throws the ball, you hit the ball at a certain position. While this can be expanded upon for professional players to various different kinds of josekis, it should be noted that joseki is simply common patterns. So, joseki is something that's actually available for free for you to look up online. Studying Joseki is actually how you can become very strong very quickly because you will have strong shapes, strong patterns in the opening. So just knowing the correct Josekis to play on certain board positions can give you an advantage over your opponent at certain levels. However, I would like to point out, do not memorize Joseki. I'll say this again, do not memorize Joseki. Memorizing Joseki very, very bad and can hinder your improvement later down the road. The reason for this is, Josekis are common patterns, but they are not the only moves possible to play. Having the freedom of mind to choose different kinds of Josekis on different boards or different types of moves on different boards, and having that type of freedom and freedom of thought, is very important to play a perfect Go game. So, limiting yourself to only certain Joseki patterns is actually very bad. When you study Joseki, you should study the moves in depth, trying to think why each and every single move is played in a certain position, and then figure out which position on a global board, meaning an opening position, should this Joseki or this specific variation be played, and why. Asking yourself why is probably the most important thing when learning Joseki patterns. So, that's how you can study Joseki. For free Joseki dictionaries, look up josekipedia.com or edogo.com, or perhaps you can Google Joseki dictionaries online, and maybe there's some new ones out for you to study and look up. For our first Joseki patterns, though, we're going to learn some simple variations from moves that might occur in your own games. Our first move that we're going to work with is a 3-4 point. Our opponent's going to approach high with the fourth line move. This is the most common approach to the 3-4 point in amateur games, so we're going to learn this one first. Here we can see that white has approached black one space away. Our first move is going to be an under attachment. This move is very nice for taking territory in the corner, but since we touch our opponent, our opponent can now play a hane, or a bend around move, in order to decrease our liberties. So now we, black must retreat back to keep his stones connected, Stay strong and secure the corner. Now white has a cut, so he fixes his cut. And then black extends along the side in order to not get surrounded. Black neglects this move, tries to pincer white. White can simply play a move like this. Black must try and escape. White threatens to cut, so black fixes his cut. White expands, black pushes once, and white expands again. This thickness is very nice for white, and it is said that this thickness could be slightly bigger for white than what black will get in the corner, because this thickness will affect the rest of the board, while this black stones are only going to get this much in territory and will never get any more than this. Normally, getting surrounded in the corner is not recommended. It's usually good for your opponent. Therefore, we want to expand here and expand our position in order to increase our territory and not get surrounded in the corner. Now we want to make a base. A base is efficient eye space. If you have one stone and you want to make a base, the way to make a base is actually to jump over two spaces. So one stone jumps over two in order to make a base. So in this case, we actually have two stones. Two stones want to jump over three. One, two, three. We'll talk more about bases in the next video. However, in this case, we want white to expand three spaces since he has two stones. Making a base is actually something you'll learn in middle game, but 
we can start playing and applying these patterns in our Josekis because they can help us later in the game. Have a solid group and a solid position, as well as a solid extension and solid base, it becomes very easy to deal with this group or help this group later in the game. So here is the end of our first Joseki. The one thing you want to note at the end of every Joseki is who has Sente. Sente is the initiative, meaning it is now Black's turn. At the end of this variation, Black will have the first move to play somewhere else. It's important to remember this because some Joseki may be better than others on certain board positions depending on who gets Sente. That's the end of our first Joseki. Let's learn another one. Another one is actually just expanding out like this. Sometimes this side or this side might be better. So when you're choosing a Joseki, try to figure out which side you want to be on and then choose the Joseki that puts you on that side. This one may give us a little bit more influence than the last one. So some, this means I want to put more emphasis on a center position or a center influence, or perhaps getting control of the center or reducing my opponent's influence, and that's why I'm playing this type of Joseki. It may sound complicated, but when you learn this later on down the road and you learn influence and you learn thickness and center moyo, then you'll need to remember that some Josekis actually can help you deal with those influences. Our Joseki here is, since black expanded to the side, white's going to try to take the corner. White touch, so black hanes. White expands back to stay connected. Black has a cut, so he fixes with the tiger's mouth. A tiger's mouth is very good for making eyes. And then white expands his base. Two stones want to expand three, if possible. In this case, white can expand this far because if black goes in, white can play the diagonal and black has no way out. If you're unsure or you want to be a little bit more secured, then you can play this way. Just note that it is a little slow, but it is a little bit more secure. This move, however, is the proper move. So this ends our second Joseki. In this case, black got Sente again. All right, so we've learned two Joseki with this three, four point. What about with the star point? The most common approach you'll see with the star point is actually the low approach. The simplest Joseki with the star point is just backing off, and expin uh, expanding along the side like so. White will slide into the corner. Now note, we played the second line. Normally you want to stick to the third line. However, in this case, when we stick to the third line, our opponent can play on it, and we have bad liberties. So now we want to ex expand down. And our opponent can block the corner, and then we extend like this to make a base. So let's compare this to the actual result of the other Joseki. If we just simply slide under our opponent and not touch, because touching will help make your opponent strong. Our opponent blocks with the 3-3, three, three, and now we expand along the side like so. The difference is we didn't make this exchange. If we play this way, I do not want to play this move and this move and then expand. Reason is, later in the game, we may be able to play this move. And this move's much better than this move. Some players may ask, well, can't black block immediately? Yes, black can. However, it's a little bit slow to play right now. Sente's a little bit bigger than this. So this is Joseki, and black has Sente. So once again, black back it off, backed off, expanded along the top side. White slid into the corner to threaten the corner territory. Black blocks the corner, and white expands along the side and makes a base. One last thing to note about this Joseki. This is a common mistake for beginners. The reason this move is not good is while it looks like it blocks because if I go up, then black gets more territory. However, what happens if I go here? Now black tries to cut. Ah. But now this stone at S17 captured. So even if black can surround me, black loses his entire corner territory. Normally this is not recommended. Rather, just play here. White expands and black will get sente. So the second Joseki we want to learn with, with the 4-4 is something that many players will be scared to do for a while, 
However, it's very important to learn this and not be afraid to do it in real games. That is the 3-3 invasion. 3-3 invasion is very good for invading and getting immediate life in your opponent's territory. This will become very important when your opponent's positions get too, lar too large and you need to invade. So here, Black will block either this side or this side depending on which direction he wants his influence. Try to block in the direction where your framework already exists. For example, if I have a stone here, then I would want to block on this side. But if my stone's here, then I want to block on this side. Because I want to expand and develop my position that I already have stones supporting me on. The Joseki is block on the side, white expands, black tries to keep white in the corner, white expands, black must go forward because if you go here, there's some cutting points. The black goes forward, white expands on the second line once. Pushing your opponent from behind on the second line is not usually good. However, we want to do it once. That is because if our opponent plays here, we have a cut we have to fix, right? So our opponent can block for free and force us to response. So our opponent's blocking in Sente. However, if we play once and then leave, our opponent cannot block in Sente anymore because now this cut does not work. So make sure this block is not Sente and then don't then stop pushing on the second line from behind immediately. Only push on the second line in order to stop this cut from being sente, or stop this block from being sente by threatening this cut. All right, so we did our second push. Now the block is not sente. And now we want to expand our eye space in the corner by playing this hana here. Our opponent blocks, we fix our cut, and black fixes his cut. It is important not to fix directly like this. That is because later in the game, near the end, our opponent can play here. We block for the end game, and we'll have a cut here that we have to fix. But if we play it this way, then when our opponent plays, we can block, and now there's no cut, and we'll have the first move. This marks the end of the Joseki. This variation locally is good for black. However, if your opponent gets if your opponent's position gets too large or too big, sometimes you need to invade because your opponent will just get too much territory if you don't. Many players at the beginner level like to invade immediately. That is because they think this territory is worth more than the influence. But I will tell you now, this influence on an open board is worth much, much more than the territory white gets in the corner. However, when black has a double wing or some type of extension on both sides or some type of large expansion or large framework, you can see that black has a very large position. So in this case, you should immediately go in. And that is because if you don't, and black gets this type of move, then the territory on the right side and top side becomes very large for black. So sometimes his position will get too large, and sometimes you will need to go in. So for example, if I just go in right now, then I can immediately make life. You can see black will only get one of the two sides, rather than getting both. So I took black's corner, and I took the top side, and black only gets the right side. The double wing should be avoided for black, because the double wing has no way to stop white from doing the three. There's no good follow for black either. Rather, you should do a move something like this. That way the three three becomes much more difficult for your opponent. That way you have an extension and a corner enclosure, and this becomes a very large position. You get the corner and you get a side. But if you try to get two sides and the corner, you might end up losing more than you were trying to get. Our last move is the 3-3. The 3-3 has a couple of simple Josekis. Our first one is a one-space approach, an extension, make a base, and extend. This is a very simple and very easy Joseki pattern for the 3-3. Our other variation is this one. This one can get a little bit complicated. However, simply push once, slide, jump, slide, jump. There's many other variations in here to worry about, but this is the simplest pattern and the simplest variation, and it's 
secured for both sides. In this case, white will get the influence and black will get the territory. So you can try this Joseki and see how it works in your game. But remember, choose the Joseki that works on the specific board that you're playing. Some Josekis are good on some boards and not good on others. So it's more important to have an understanding of which direction you should be playing on, which side you should be playing on, are you developing, where are you developing, and understanding the opening principles more than understanding Josekis. Because Josekis, in hindsight, can be useless if you're not playing them on the correct board position. All right, hopefully you guys found this video helpful and hopefully you understood the variations to some extent. You can also check out a Joseki series on YouTube or look up Joseki dictionaries online and see what are other patterns and Joseki patterns you can choose from on specific board positions. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.